Hello everyone, welcome back to some more Starfield. Last time we got a new piece of the artifact and then we were attacked by someone called or someone or something called a Starborn and then it kicked off a bunch of like missions. So we're going to follow up on some of that. Um, so it kicked off this mission further into unknown. I think this is going to be the next constellation mission. And then, but we also had some of these side objectives, talk to Vladimir about the temples and stuff. So we're going to have to talk to Vladimir regardless. There was one other thing though, uh, in the activities, uh, talking to Barrett. So I guess we will start there. And Barrett's I up. I must confess, Ugh. the hum of a grab drive <laughs> makes me feel alive. Barrett's up here. Talk to me. I'd like to talk to you about something when you have the chance. Everyone wants to talk to me. Me and the boys bonding. Let's talk to Barrett first. I've been thinking a lot about my early days in Constellation lately. Got me pretty nostalgic and I started digging in some old things. Just sort of reminiscing. I found some of Irvin's last messages to me and thought I'd listen to them again to hear his voice. Well, wait, what are we talking about? Oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself there. Remember a bit ago we were talking about Constellation? I've just been thinking about it since. And Irvin, my husband, used to be in Constellation way back when. So my mind jumped to thinking about him. So I was listening to these old messages to hear his voice. Were these previously unread messages? No, I apparently read at least a few of these. I just don't remember. It was a difficult time. I hope that was a comfort. It was surreal, honestly. So most of the messages were everyday things. Lots of excitedly written news about biodiversity and plant life. But one thing stood out. In one of his messages, he mentioned this job that he took at a mine shortly before he died. He said something terrible was happening there. Terrible. The message was garbled after that. Interstellar communication isn't always reliable. True, but this was different. I recognize this pattern from the war. A portion of the message was encrypted. Well, Vasco helped me decipher it. Turns out the message was from Irvin, and he was begging me oh, to help Oh, damn. Him. The message was short, but his voice was pained. Like 20 so years ago, upset. too. <laughs> Let's get the time machine. <laughs> oh, that's insensitive. What was the message? He said they were going to destroy his life if he didn't leave the planet now. Then he asked me to help clear his name. Said they had a case against him. Oh, he sounded so upset. He was injured? No, he was frustrated and angry. He said they were going to destroy his name. That must have been difficult to hear, Barrett. <sighs> yes. Hearing his voice in so much pain was very difficult. Oh. <sighs> Wish I had noticed this message when he sent it. So in this message, Irvin said he was being framed. He said they'll do it again. He asked if Constellation could send more help. Who is they? His former employers at some job he took before he died. I think it was a mining company. You didn't notice this encrypted message before? No, I just thought it was garbled. I just wasn't paying attention. I don't know. This recording is 20 years old. It is, but I was thinking about it and well, it's still wrong, right? So I figured, hey, I can do some sort of a remote investigation here. See what I can find out. There's gotta be a paper trail, right? Now, I happen to have a trustworthy contact who knows a bit about law and owes me a favor. 
I'd need to pay in advance in case there are any access fees or bribes. <laughs> Constellation is favor. Uh, yeah, 2,500 credits. This should be enough. That works. I'll tell them to go ahead with the investigation. You know, hearing Irvin's voice again made me want to help him. <laughs> Even though I know I can't. Do we know for sure that he's dead, Does though? Does that make any sense? <laughs> Everything is <laughs> Uh... If everyone was that upset, then it must have still be it must still be important. I appreciate that. It's going to be hard to get some sleep tonight after all this. What's Walter doing? But the fact that I'm doing something about it might be enough to help. Hopefully, poking around in old records doesn't catch the attention of Hephaestus. Well, anyway, I'll let you know if my contact finds anything. Okay. Uh, Walter wants to talk as well. I'll sit here. Don't you dare move. <laughs> so, about that Sebastian Spanks speech. Oh, right. I was afraid you were going to bring that <laughs> up again. Very well. Let's see if I embarrass myself or not. My colleagues... I venture out into the darkness of space once again. Many of you have expressed concern. At my age, you say? Surely the risks are too great. Surely Sebastian Banks has earned a rest. Nonsense, I say. To go out into the unknown, to brave the possibility of never coming back, to ignite the spark of hope that humanity will find answers out there in the stars, that is all I have ever wanted. If this last expedition is my time, then I say I have been fortunate. I have been fortunate to leave surrounded by people who could not be more different from one another. What if he became the Starborn? Common purpose. Because this guy disappeared, that, right? Dare I say, I am fortunate. My soul has a home. It can always come back to. And that was the last thing Sebastian Banks ever said in the Lodge before he disappeared. And Constellation has been waiting for him to come home ever since. What kind of company was uh, Stroud Eklund? We're most well known for ship manufacture. No expense spared. If you want the best and can afford it, you choose Stroud Eklund. So this guy basically funds our Constellation. Success means you'll sometimes see Stroud Eklund ship modules on less than reputable vessels. They covet them. The bastards. I've tried to convince the United Colonies we can help in that regard, but they're married to Deimos Star Yards, and those old salts are stuck in the glory days. This isn't where I expect to find a CEO. Funny thing about companies, you build one sturdy enough, it doesn't need you there all the time to prop it up. Stroud Eklund functions quite well on a day-to-day -day basis, leaving me time to devote to more esoteric pursuits. For years, I was captivated by the writings of Constellation's founder, Sebastian Banks. I finally decided to do something more than admire from a distance, and so now, I call the Lodge home, as much as anywhere else. What's your role in Constellation? Me? <laughs> <laughs> Why, I'm the wallet. Well, that answers that Someone question. <laughs> has to fund all this, and all my success in business doesn't mean much if I can't put it to good use. I don't pretend to have the daring of Ms. Morgan or the smarts of young Mateo, but I can make sure that they have the resources they need. And as you may have seen, those resources aren't being wasted. Are you kidding me? We're onto something big here. 
That is not at all how I remember it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Remind me again next week, will you? I'll get you back. Sorry, I was trying to listen to their conversation. You okay after the ambush with the starboard? I do it. Not my first time in a hostile negotiation, as you well know. Admittedly, I usually know more about who I'm facing off against. I'm very interested in what Noel can learn from the scans. The technology on that ship was impressive, to say the least. We need to steal There's it. There's a chance we could learn enough to duplicate some of yes. it. Yes. There's the entrepreneur I know. I got to where I am by taking advantage of opportunities, no matter where I find them. Might as well make the most of this crazy situation. I was wondering if you had any more work for me. I want you to know I was very impressed with your work back on Neon. I know you well enough to feel that this is leading somewhere. <laughs> There's no fooling you. Don't worry. This is a much lower stake opportunity. My Star Yard's been having a little trouble getting our next project off the ground. I need someone capable and decisive to step in and steer it in the right direction. Literally or figuratively? Because I'll steer shit. <laughs> Aren't you usually more involved in major company decisions than th like this? As you know, I'm a busy man. Running a company, helping to manage Constellation's financial needs. It doesn't leave me with much time to get into the weeds with every little business venture that comes my way. Besides, think of this as a rare opportunity to help shape the future of a major consumer brand. Uh, whatever it is, I'm in. Love the enthusiasm. I knew there was a reason I picked you to help with this project. It's a new ship. We want to diversify our fleet. Now we're talking. Now, I don't know why the people I pay very handsomely to come up with new designs can't seem to get out of the R&D phase. And frankly, I don't care. I just want someone, you, to go there and show them how it's done. Why is the project still in research and development? R&D needs to happen first, whenever work starts on a new project. It's a natural stalling point, since we need to make so many big decisions. In this case, we're talking about looking at our existing fleet of ships and using data we've gathered to see what consumers want. But of course, each member of the R&D team can interpret that data to suit their own confirmation bias. I'm guessing that's what we're seeing here. You really want my help even though I'm not a professional ship designer? To be honest, I prefer it. I have professional designers and obviously they can't do the job. They're floundering. And as I've seen firsthand, you dabble in all spectrums. Blue collar work, exploration, fighting. I could go on. What better person Man to of many skills. overpaid muckety mucks how to build a ship for the discerning consumer? Uh, you can count on me. Excellent. I'll send word ahead to the project lead, Jules de Gante, that you're taking point. They'll all be instructed to listen to you and follow your direction. I expect big things from you, so I'm excited to see what you manage to deliver. I don't believe you'll let me down. Okay. Over-designed. Um... Uh... I have to pause for a sec. Okay, sorry for the weird cut there. I had to do some real life stuff. Um, I've changed my mind. We're going to do the quest that Walter just gave us. Um, simply because in terms of like video wise, it's I think it's better to keep it in the same video. And then in the next video, we'll, we'll decide later on. <laughs> uh, so we set a course there to Narion apparently. Let's hail them. Unknown vessel, welcome to Stroud Eckland. You are cleared to board. Let's dock.
Uh, we're gonna get up first, and then... I'm gonna go to sleep, and then we will go in and talk to Andresia, I guess. Yeah, and I took off the Mantis helmet, because it's... <laughs> it's kind of stupid. <laughs> Come on. Uh, there are worlds hey. to conquer. Come on. Oh. Right. <laughs> Hello. I'm Walter Stroud. And on behalf of Stroud, well, I have things I wish to discuss with you. state of the art star yard, when you we are done. creating revolutionary new starships. It doesn't sound like Walter. That are out of this world. You've Se seen the rest. It's time you try a Stroud Eklund. Sounds too enthusiastic. <laughs> uh, I'm proud to be part of the Stroud Eklund team. I okay. Out of curiosity, that some of these specs impressive. <laughs> Just knock the guard. <laughs> okay, let's talk to Andresia here. Never would I have imagined to encounter something like the Starborn. Now I feel that rather than having answers, we only have more questions. We shouldn't be so surprised. Uh, space is so vast that it must be full of things that we couldn't imagine. I suppose this proves that idea succinctly. Regardless of how impossible they may have seemed before now, I must say that I do not like being threatened by anyone. Uh, I took it less as less of a threat, more of a warning. It did not sound that way to me, but... I suppose we will see which is true. Clearly, the Starborn are connected to the artifacts, which would mean that they are also connected to that temple you found. Did they make these things? Have they appropriated them? This all implies there is something more, something we do not yet understand. If we keep going, I suspect we're going to run into the Starborn again. Yes. Given our first interaction with them, that seems likely. We will need to be on our guard from now on. They seem to know much about us. Perhaps we can learn more about them to make it even. We should return to our search then. There's still so much to do. Let me okay. know if you have any problems. Yes, those are like models of ship parts. I heard they're making a new class of ship here. The Moss or Stroud Ackman. Sales computer. You have a good day. Uh my business is switching to Stroud Eklund. It just makes sense. Okay, here's the people. Hi there. Jules. Hello. You just come in and just ask them how long we've been working for. Have you been leading the R&D team for long? It might surprise you to hear that no, I have not. This is actually the first project I've led for Stroud Eklund. I recently graduated with a master's degree in engineering management. I'm actually kind of surprised they hired me, but I was at the top of my class, so maybe they didn't want to lose me to some other star yard. Anyway, I'm grateful for the chance to do good work here. So you're the project lead? What does that mean? It means I'm responsible for making sure our projects are carried through to completion. I'm not the one calling all the shots per se, but I do need to ensure the people making those calls are empowered to do that within the limits the executive set for us. We better get some like super ship parts from this. I'm here to speak to you about this new sh uh, ship project. You must be Walter's colleague. He informed me that you'd be taking charge of Project Kepler despite the fact that we have a fully dedicated R&D staff already assigned to it. It's okay. I'm sure that even though you have virtually no experience with this, you'll wow. do a great job. 
Drop the passive aggression on Walter will find out. Yes, of <laughs> course. I'm sure Walter had a great reason for choosing you. Let's get to it then. Wow. Was not expecting that. As you probably know, we're tasked <laughs> with coming up with Strout Eklund's next hit starship. But we have budget concerns, market research to finish, and we can't seem to agree on a design. So I guess Walter sent you to resolve these issues. Have at it. Can you tell me more, a little bit more about the team? Sure. I'm Jules, R&D project lead. I am, was, the one making all the big decisions. I suppose I just caught him now. <laughs> I just took your job. You already heard from Frank. He's lead designer on the project, focused on the look and feel of the ships. There's Ella, another senior designer. She focuses on some of the more technical designs of ships. Went to school with Frank. Mike is our senior engineer responsible for consulting on all the technical bits, the machinery, the computer systems, etc. And then there's Nev. She's here for marketing. It's her job to weigh in and sell this thing to consumers. That's kind of condescending there. <laughs> What's so hard about choosing what kind of ship to build? There are a lot of factors to consider. Who is our market and what do they want in a ship? Which components are we putting into it? How fast should it go? How much cargo capacity should it have? What color should it be? We need to decide... Is this the luxury design. line that Walter was talk mentioning in the last video? The last few videos? Uh... <laughs> I think I understand. I'm ready. Okay, good. So, before we can do anything, we need to resolve the budget issue. We were charged with building the newest, hottest ship on the market, which won't be possible unless we petition the board for more money. So we have two new budget proposals. One will allow us to build what I consider to be a very sensible ship, but we'll have to make some tough design cuts. The other will allow us much more flexibility to put whatever we want into the ship. It's what I call the kitchen sink proposal. I don't love it, but it'll be next to impossible to approve. Kitchen what should sink we go proposal. with? What's wrong with the kitchen sink budget? Wouldn't everyone get what they want? While it's true we'd be able to afford to put anything and everything into that design, it's just not practical. And the board will put more pressure on us to see that it succeeds. I worry that without constraints, my team will be disincentivized to focus the ship in any given direction. And they'll try to cram in everything but the kitchen sink, hence the name. Who knows okay, what kind of monstrosity we'd create if we tried to incorporate all of our designs. And would something that expensive actually sell? Fair, fair. What kind of cuts would we have to make for this, this, the sensible design budget? It's more that we can only choose certain design elements at the expense of others. In other words, if we go with something in Mike's design, there's not enough money in the budget for what Ella wants. That's one of the reasons we haven't been able to agree on anything. Uh, why can't we use the original budget you were given? I'd love to, seriously. It would be a huge win for us if we came in under or at that budget. But none of the viable designs for this project can be made for that amount. I've already rejected that budget, so I have to go to the board regardless. And since you're now responsible for the major decisions, which budget proposal we go with falls on you. Uh, I want to see if oh, I can... and I seem to have lost your attention. Nice. What an asshole. <laughs> Let's see if I can talk to any of these other people first. Nev was marketing, right? And then... Ella. Uh... I think Jules is expecting you to talk with her first. Okay, whatever. Uh, hey, I think Jules wanted to talk to you first. Hmm... Hmm. Huh. How about you talk to Jules? Man, I hate all these people. This is cool. <laughs> We're all super glad you're here. Right? Right. We were talking about the two budget proposals. A smaller one and a huge one. What are you thinking? Hmm. These ships are something else. Well, what do you expect? I do understand this. Like, if you have too much of a budget, you're just kind of like unlimited and you just throw whatever's in there. Give Tayo a run for its money. Have you seen the specs on the Adonis? I'd rather be in the ship. A small budget will help us focus on the design. Let's stick to our sensible budget proposal. That sounds good to me, but remember. This ship will have fewer bells and whistles. 
we're not going to be able to include everything we want. Frank's luxury design has the most expensive components, and we've been having trouble convincing him to move away from that idea so we can stay within the budget. We need his help. Do you think you can get him to budge? I am right here, you know. <laughs> Why do I have to convince you? Isn't Jules the project leader? Yes, but I am the lead designer on the project. All design proposals need to go through me. How can I be expected to approve something I fundamentally disagree with? I I don't really care either way, so I'm just going to go straight into persuasion. Uh, yes, now, let's talk about what we can cut from your design, Frank. I already gave my answer to Jules. We cut nothing. Please, Frank, listen to reason. I'm thinking about it. You shouldn't hold up the entire project because you can't get you what you want. Maybe it is a bit selfish of me. Please, let's just all work together. I will consider it. Maybe. And then, oh. If the board had wanted a luxury ship, they would have given you the budget for that. Hmm, there's some logic to that. But maybe we just need to get a little more creative with the design. And last one. Please, we all just want to finish this project. <sighs> yes, you're right. But it's not that. Yes! I just want to make sure I'm not giving everything up in return. Fine. I see what you're saying. Perhaps we tone down the luxury aspects a bit. Wow, gold trim. Does it really need so much gold trim? Probably not. For what it is worth, I believe that is the correct approach. Luxury should not be the goal here. Also, Frank annoys me. I agree. <laughs> Great! That's one problem solved. I'll go forward with that budget proposal and we can move on. Next, we need to gather some market data. The best way to do this is to outfit your ship with some sensors and take it through some real-world scenarios so we can make more informed design decisions. Sure, sounds good. Just tell me what I need to do. Great! Just pick up a mission or two at the mission board oh, and proceed like you normally would. <laughs> we'll collect the data when you return. If you take on a variety of missions, we can build a ship to handle a variety of scenarios. But if you just fly one mission, we can build a more focused ship. It's up to you. In the meantime, you might also want to talk with the team, get to know them, give feedback on their proposals, etc. Good luck out there. Uh. Okay. Complete a bounty mission, complete a passenger mission. Let's talk to the team. Nev? Um, hi. <laughs> Need something? You seem a little on the edge. Is something wrong? Oh, no. Well, it's just... I'm a little new here, and everyone's got these big, flashy designs. Gold trim. And I'm supposed to come up with one too, but like... I don't know if it's as good, or like, good at all, even. I'm sure it's just as good as the other ones, if not better. Thank you for saying that, but like, really? I don't know. <clears throat> Whatever. Here goes. So, I was thinking that we could really use a recreational craft in our fleet. But not like super luxurious like our Adonis pleasure yacht, something marketed more towards families. Something mom and dad could pack up and take the kids on vacation. <laughs> yeah? You probably think that's stupid, right? What would it take to design a ship like that? Hmm. I haven't thought of all the details, but I'd imagine lots of passenger space would be a top priority. A mid-sized ship with enough room for one, or maybe even two or three families to spread out and relax. I don't think it'd need any fancy weapons or scientific equipment, so it should be pretty affordable. Families don't want to spend a fortune, so keeping the cost low will help guarantee plenty of sales. Should I just agree with her? <laughs> a recreational ship sounds like a great idea. It's unique and fun. Oh, really? Wow, I am... <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm really glad I told you about it. Well, if we end up making it, I swear I'll work up a hell of an ad campaign for it. So what's it like to do marketing for a ship manufacturer like, th like this? It's... interesting. <laughs> I'm new, and I've never done anything like this before coming here. M marketing for ships, specifically, that is. There are so many things to think of for different demographics, like style, features, cost, and all that. And you also need to think about offensive and defensive capabilities, because space is dangerous and people need to feel like the ship they're buying is safe. You mentioned you're new here. What did you do to before this? Yeah, I've only been here for a few months. I did a little marketing for chunks before this, but it was really more of an internship. <laughs> Ships are, like, totally different than that. I applied for the job here on a whim because I thought it'd be fun. I never expected to be hired. Uh, do you like working here? So far I do. But, um, <clears throat> just between you and me, I feel like I'm in a little over my head. I, I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. But my bosses really seem to like my work, so... I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm doing something right. <sighs> I still feel weird pitching ideas to people who have been at this for so much longer than I have. Okay. <laughs> Catch you around. And then we'll talk to Ella. So, you're Walter's friend. I know he chose you to head this project as some sort of... favor? Honestly, as senior technical designer, I was hoping to receive that honor, but, um... Uh, there's always next time. Regardless, yeah, don't count I'm it. excited to help you out. Do you have any experience building spaceships? I have no idea what I'm doing. I commend your honesty, but that <laughs> does not set me at ease. Maybe we can still succeed if you listen to our advice. Now, I know you've been asked to give feedback on our design proposals. Would you care for a brief synopsis of mine? Sure. Um... Can you tell me more about yourself first? I'm the most senior designer on this project, for one. Despite all the acclaim he gets, I actually referred Frank to his current design position. <laughs> he and I were in the same design program when we went to get our degrees back in uni. We support each other as friends as much as possible. Even when we disagree. I love my job here. But I dream one day of working for a small startup or running my own design firm so I can work on custom ships. Instead of mass-produced products. Yes, please tell me what sort of ship you had in mind. Of course. But first, let me ask you this. What pilot demographic is currently being underserved by the current stock? I have market? no idea. Pirates. <laughs> I don't know, but I feel like you're going to tell me. Well, you're not fun. My idea is a little less... conventional. I believe we should invest in making a dedicated exploration ship, marketed towards citizen scientists. Okay. Sure. Constellation style. other manufacturers have lines of exploration ships, but none built with the average consumer in mind. It's my hope that we can jumpstart a new era of affordable, accessible space exploration, fueled by ordinary people like you and me. So we have two for... Ordinary people or family so far. How would I design a ship like that? I'd start with a small ship profile. It won't need much storage or passenger capacity. Then, of course, you would want an advanced grab drive to reach deep space and plenty of energy for extended flights. In order to keep costs down, it likely doesn't need expensive weapon systems or defensive measures. It won't need those where it's going. And of course, high end scanners and other scientific equipment is a must. Hmm. I don't know about, like, agreeing to all of this. Not a bad concept, but it seems like it's a very niche product. Yeah, that's what Jules said, too. But at least that gives me something to think about. Thanks. I'll refine the idea and propose it next time, I guess. What do you think of this company? Why do I feel like answering this could be a trap coming from someone who was sent <laughs> here by Walter to step in and take over our project? 
Ah, it's not like I have anything to hide. I used to think working for a super wealthy corporation would be terrible, but honestly, it's pretty great. They've been good to me, and the stability is way better than any startup. I've had opportunities I wouldn't have anywhere else, so yeah, pretty great. What does your job entail here? Well, what does your as job a entail? Designer, I'm trusted to work on some what does your job here entail? Features on these ships. Most of my work is on the technical features, designing them to be more user-friendly. Computer systems like navigation, targeting, you name it. It may not be as glamorous as what Frank does, but without me, these ships would be almost impossible for the average consumer to actually use. Okay. See you around, I guess. Very enthusiastic there. Let's I'll talk to Mike. If we need another chef in the kitchen. Then again, I hear Walter brought you in to finally make a decision around here. It sounds like you have an issue with me. Well, quite the opposite, actually. See, I don't care who makes the decision so long as someone does it. And said proposal doesn't make me regret getting into engineering. You get me? Speaking of which, I think my plan will get us where we need to be as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's simple, no frills, and most importantly, won't cause me any major headaches on the engineering side. Okay, but first, what can you tell me about your role here? <sighs> Couldn't figure it out from the engineering <clears throat> talk? Nope. I'm an engineer, mate. It means I'm the one who's got to put together all these plans and actually make the bloody ship fly. Been doing it for going on 25 years at various star yards. <laughs> they still haven't realized this place would fall apart if not for me. And instead of letting me get to my work, they keep giving me fancy new titles and got me tied up in endless meetings like this one. Sounds like this project is hard on the engineers. Why is that? Oh, let me tell you. All the creative minds around here are so concerned with designing the most innovative and fancy ships possible. They never stop to think about the kind of work it takes to do that in a reasonable time frame. Yes, we're engineers. Our job is to make the bloody impossible possible. But that doesn't mean it's easy or practical. That and there's never enough of us to go around. Sounds like a win for your team. Go on. It's truth, and we need it. The others believe we need to think big and innovate. Reality is, we just need to do what we do better than anyone else. So I'm thinking, there's loads of fires. No sense in mucking about with that again. And we've already got one of the best luxury liners in the biz. Okay, yeah. What I figure is, the cargo running business is booming, and no one's quite built a personal craft like that to serve the working class folk. Nothing fancy. No frills. Just a simple, sturdy, inexpensive ship with cargo room up the wazoo and make it so easy my cousin's little moppet could fly it. Okay, so... So far, all three is about affordability and, like, low-cost, everyday people designs. Sounds simple enough. Uh, any other designs considerations? Our objective should be to build a huge ship with plenty of cargo room while keeping the cost low. Doesn't need fancy equipment, just the basics. Basic weapons, basic defenses, basic scanners. You get the idea. If we go with a design like that, I can focus on quality construction and the ship will practically sell itself. Maybe you can make, make your pitch a little more exciting. Mm. Yes, of course. Zhuzh it up just enough to disappoint me even more when we ultimately <laughs> end up choosing something ridiculous. Thanks. What do you think of Stroud Eklund? I assume you mean the company and not the people. Because even if I didn't already think so, I'd tell you that both Walter and Issa are great. The company is still kind of young as far as Star Yards go, but it seems to be going in the right direction. Despite what it may look like, I've been doing this for a while at other Star Yards, and so far, we're avoiding a lot of the mistakes some of the older corps have made. So you're kind of like the lead engineer here? <laughs> yeah, that's me, innit? 
Been here since the start of the company. Done engineering for going on 30 years total. Though I keep telling them, it's senior, not lead engineer. I've got no interest in being lead. Too much management. Not enough tactile work. <laughs> and yet here I am. Resigned to my fate on the R&D team. I'd rather be in a ship that can defend itself. I don't want to be a target. Maybe the venture then. You don't like being involved in research and development? Nope. Not really. I like to think I don't have the ego for it. I've got nothing to prove, and I don't rightly care to make my mark on the industry. All I want to do is build the best damn starships I can, and not get bogged down with all the excess particulars. But upper management loves the work I do, and they wouldn't let me say no to this. I guess they needed someone to keep everyone's heads out of the clouds, so here I am. Okay, let's right. do some missions then. Take care. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will find listening to them so kind of boring, here. but... I just kind of want to get a better idea of what's going on. Uh, transport. I don't have enough space. Okay, so hold up. Um, complete a bounty mission. Doesn't say what pipe I need to, and then complete a passenger mission. Um, we do have some pre-existing missions already, and some of them are the uh, free star ones. We can kill the ecliptic agents. So I guess we'll head towards this base and fight some ecliptids, right? Yeah. So humans, we're gonna use our sniper-ish thing. It's not that powerful. <laughs> Okay, never mind. It says I'm detected. I'm gonna jump up here first. Oh. Let's not go there. Can we turn the turrets on them? I do not like the cold. It stiffens the joints, lowers reaction times. I mean, they don't. S Always look. <laughs> Does the UC really think sis death scares us? <laughs> I mean, I just shot you in the face, but okay. <laughs> I guess they don't care that I'm here. Hey, All buddy. Credits keep rolling in. Life's good. Uh, so how the hell do I get in there? Through here? Ooh, they have a giant space gun. Aren't these like ecliptics? Nobody can stop the Crimson Fleet. 
Does the UC really think Sistef scares us? I mean, if I do it quietly, <laughs> there's a bunch of people here though. Hitman refined Grendel. Ooh, this isn't stealing too. Chameleon lead lined mirrored. Okay. I'm taking all of that. Oh, damn. I'm taking that too. Elemental Beowulf. Uh, exterminator plus 30% damage against aliens. Corrosive. Uh, randomly deals corrosive damage and reduces target's armor over 6 seconds. This is a straight up upgrade to my Beowulf. Randomly deals corrosive radiation poison and incendiary damage. Taking that. This isn't stealing. What? Ah, oh, crap. I left in the ship tonight. Glad you're in the fleet. If you weren't, I would have killed you already. Uh, I'm sure they have digipix around here, right? Okay, you know what? This guy's alone. It would be really helpful if we had that uh, Fallout 4 thing where we could just put a grenade in their inventory. Okay. Skip shot assassins calibrated Beowulf. Holy crap, 71 damage. Taking that, taking that, taking that, taking that. Always worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets. I mean, are they... They don't care, right? Hey, buddy. As long as the credits keep rolling in, life's good. I think the digipix may be on Andresia. If I can take a few things, I will. No. Until next time. I'll come back. I'll go get my digipix and then I'll come back. I uh, put some of my guns away and I switched to this newer gun. Uh, 71 damage with the uh, anti-personnel with med theft and skip shot. That kind of replaces like three of my guns at once basically. Um, so we're gonna do some locking. Okay, let's see what this is. Can succeed at that before we are discovered. Uh, seems pretty good. I'd say it's worth it. Grab everything. Grab this too. And it doesn't seem like anything I take here is stealing, so... Uh, I already explored the base a little bit, and there are a bunch of chests and stuff, so we're going to open all of those. But aside from that, there doesn't seem to be... Like, any, like, skill books or anything like that, unless I missed it. Or anything else that's too interesting here. Okay, got that, got that. Yeah, so the other stuff are in this section here. Again, just gonna take everything. Uh, where was it? Oh, right here. I'll take the ammo here too. Nothing too interesting there. Got my pack. And then there's some stuff that was locked in here as well. Okay. Hey. 
easy. Wow, really? <laughs> um, taking that, taking that. I think there was some more stuff. Took that already. Yeah. Um. Ah, uh, we're taking this. And then this is just like their fuel storage supply room. There wasn't really too much in here. Uh, I took some of the stuff from the desk already. And this computer is even more worthless. There's like literally nothing in here. You just enter it and there's nothing you can do. So, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much this base. I just didn't want to kill them because I didn't want a, like a giant bounty on my head from the Crimson Fleet. But whatever. Did that actually complete my quest for the... Because technically... Okay. That didn't do it. Okay, so that was a waste of time. So we're back at the Stroud Eklund Star Yard, and we switched to the UC Prison ship. So hopefully that can allow us to transport workers. Nope. Passenger slot. Yeah. And then we'll make it the home ship. And then with this, we should be able to take... Uh, transport scientist Gila. Yes, we'll accept the mission. We'll destroy the Crimson Fleet haunt at Cheyenne, which is also at Aquila. Okay, I guess we level up for that. Um, I'll save the level up until after the video, and then I'll think about it a little bit. So now we will go back to Diane. Hold up. Oh, we're going to the... Luxury Line Star Yard. Okay, let's set course there. And then we'll jump there. I also... <laughs> unfortunately, I lost a lot of my old weapons. I stored it at the back of the uh, Mantis ship, but not in the actual cargo. Go ahead and land. Uh, what's happening here? <laughs> Power from beyond. There's a large anomaly that matches the signature of one of the artifacts, and you find it. Okay. But we're going here. Trident Luxury Line Star Yard. Pick up the hail now. Oh. Okay. Hey, you the courier. Smuggler says he passed you the package. Thing is, that was my package you stole. Which means you owe. Credits or your life. Your choice. I'm not paying any credits.
damn it. <laughs> Uh, my passengers are dead. Okay, so, hold up. What if... I just went to Akira City? This is run away. <laughs> I tried so many times to fight them, I just kept dying and dying. They just wrecked me. Okay, and then we will go back to space, see if they're still there. <laughs> ah, god damn it. Okay, what happens if I go... There now. <laughs> Just keep running away. Can they follow you me? Had your chance. Damn it, that didn't work. Come on, come on, come on, come on. They've disabled the grab drive. Just spamming heals right now. Oh, that was real close. Ah, come on. Damn it. Ah. <laughs> it's close, it's close. Let's try that again. <sighs> okay, this is gonna be a long one. <laughs> what if... I jump to... a different space? Yeah? Let's go to... Alpha Centauri. Jemison. And we can jump there. Okay, and then we'll go to Cheyenne again. See if uh, that can throw them off my tail. <laughs> Grab drive spinning down. Systems green. Okay, I guess we'll shoot or complete this part of the mission first. Who are you guys? Oh. No, we'll, we'll, we'll go to the star yard first and then we'll do that. shipping crate there. Ok, 
is after I go to the star yard, I can switch back to Lucy, and then sh Lucy has more uh, offensive capabilities, so I should be able to defend myself a little bit better if I ever run into those guys again. But we'll grab this crate, and then we will deliver those passengers. parts. Excellent. And then we'll dock on the Trident Star Yard. And we are locked in. Yeah. Say the word, and we shall be on our way. Okay. Actually, before we do that, let's switch back to Lucy first. Okay, we are back on- we are back in Lucy, which is a way more capable ship. Uh... We're going to put some... power into our missiles and our other weapon systems. Uh, maybe engine as well. And then we will get close to them again. Plenty of marks to go around. It's a good time to be a pirate. You're one of my marks. Don't worry. Yeah, Lucy is so much faster. Where is he running to, though? Come on. Damn it. Okay, got them. Next. So much easier with Lucy. <laughs> I might as well take these guys out, now that I'm here. Like, I don't need to, but might as well. Come on, pop your head up. Okay. Next one. I thought the other one was hot. Did they? Target grab drive is disabled. Enemy shield generator has been locked out. Okay, whatever. Grab jump is back online. Cargo hold full. BS. I guess I'll talk to this guy here as well. You know, I have designed spacecraft for over 10 years. So, you must have really impressed Walter for him to give you this project. 
Or maybe it's a bit of nepotism. Never mind that. <laughs> Perhaps he sees in you what he sees in me. Uh... What do you think Walter sees in you? Us? <laughs> My hope is that he sees the passion in our work. In truth, I know he values me, but he has yet to truly cut me loose from the corporate reins and let me do as I wish. But I understand Walter has given you much greater control of our project. Perhaps I can learn from you and convince him I'm ready for the same. Can you tell me a bit? Can you tell me about yourself? As a designer, I see the beauty in our craft and deliver that to the consumer. My desire is to make flying in our ships a joy to all the senses. I have won awards. I am proud of my work. But I do not like to brag. Rather, oh, that's totally not to what you're doing right now. perception of employees like myself from mere cogs in the corporate machine to value us as artists and let us do as we please. Ten years of experience isn't as much as you seem to think it is. No one asked you, newbie. <laughs> I don't even know why I am being asked to accept feedback from someone who only just joined our team. But here we are. Anyway, imagine a luxury craft designed for the most discerning of tastes. Every feature designed for comfort and peace of mind. High-end performance. Precision engineering. A spacecraft for those who wish to be seen. This will be the most elite personal craft on the market. How would we design a ship like that? The ship should be mid-size. Spacious, but not bulky. We'll want to build it with the highest quality, most expensive modules available. It should feel safe, but not threatening. Focus on defensive measures, not aggressive weaponry. Above all, you should be able to picture your favorite celebrity, or Walter himself, <laughs> flying this ship and influencing others to buy as well. I don't like this guy, so I'm just going to disagree with him. I had better ideas coming out of my fever dreams. I'm sure such ideas have been featured in the top trade publications. Perhaps in talentless smart asses monthly? I'm in the cover of that. Hmm. In fact, you've made me realize that your involvement makes it such that if this project fails, we can point to you as the problem. If anything, I should thank you. What's going on, Frank? Why so defensive about your design? Because I am the lead designer on the project. It is literally my job to design it. It is frustrating because I keep getting pushback, and Jules has this idea that we will make a better product by designing it all together. Since everyone has equal say, it led us to a standstill. It was much easier before. I feel like Frank's idea here is like completely different from all the other three. Why do you work here if you seem so unhappy with the way things are? Just because I do not like how corporate we have become doesn't mean I don't like getting paid. <laughs> Besides, with every successful ship I design, I believe I can influence the company to shift away from typical corporate bullshit and back to taking risks by pursuing art and innovation. Then again, here we are. What was that about wanting to sell this ship to celebrities? Why is it so important? Two words. Conspicuous consumption. Are you familiar with this concept? Words, words, words. Give me the short version. Huh. Of course. Rich celebrity like Borealis buys shiny ship to show off. Idiot consumer sees Borealis use our ship and idiot consumer wants one too. I hope that's simple enough for you. <laughs> so condescending. Uh, whatever. Yeah, I'm yeah. done. See you. Well, we're making progress now. I guess. I guess your proposals. We've got people poring over the data you collected as we speak. I can give you some feedback on your design proposal if you'd like. Oh yes, I actually do have a proposal. I wasn't really expecting you to give me feedback, but why not? I guess. I'd like to see us branch out a bit more in the Starfighter market. 
Bounty hunting and mercenary work are both big these days, especially among the hard-blooded free stars. Is there a lot of demand for uh, starfighters in the consumer market? I'm glad you brought that up. No, and yes, there's a lot of work out there that requires a capable fighting ship. But the real success comes from UC military contracts, which we would hope to attract by building a higher-end version of this ship platform for them. Hmm. They did say about how UC keeps clinging to Demo Staryard. So how would we go about designing a starfighter like that? We'd want to give it strong weapons, tough defenses, plus good speed and maneuverability. Most starfighters are fairly small, and the tricky part is keeping costs down with all those fancy modules. Wonderful! Thank you! I'm hoping when the time comes, I'll be able to convince the others that's what we should go with. Versatility may not be what certain customers are looking for. So you managed to complete a couple different missions. This will give us lots of data to support building a ship that can tackle a variety of scenarios. Of course, if we build a ship like that, we may need the kitchen sink budget, but we'll see. Thanks for your help. Now, we just need to solve our interpersonal issues so we can agree on a design. Easy, right? <laughs> I'll give it a try, but I admit I have no idea what I'm doing. Great! That's <laughs> really instilling me with a lot of confidence. I've tried everything I can think of besides some sort of hokey team building exercise. So, what do you think you can do differently? What have you tried so far? Okay, for real. It's mostly been just a bunch of arguing. First, we tried a group brainstorming session, and that went about as well as you can imagine. We tried individual designs, but that backfired. We've had meetings focused on individual aspects of the ship, and that just prolonged the process. I could have put my foot down and made a decision, but then I'd be giving up on my idea that collaboration will build us the best ship. That, and I don't want anyone to resign because of me. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, the only fair thing is to make everyone give up one compromise. Hmm. I can't believe I didn't think of that. It's fair. Everyone goes around the table and makes a cut. That way no one feels like they're the only one being asked to compromise. This should drive us towards a more focused design. And since Walter asked you to take the lead on this, I don't have to be the- Oh, a bunch of assholes. So you're sure about this? <gasps> uh, maybe not. Okay. Let's try team building. Maybe, uh, group medication to calm everyone down so they can work with each other. You know what? Why not? I'll try anything at this Let's point. Let's try this first. Stranger things have happened. And since you mentioned the idea, I oh, think God. you should be the one to lead us in the guided meditation. Just feed us a steady stream of whatever positive affirmations you've got. I don't know if it will solve the design conflicts, but maybe it'll get everyone working with each other again. And I'll take what I can get, even if it leads to a more ridiculous design. So, you're sure about this? <laughs> Let's try this team building meditation session. Okay, this should be interesting since I doubt any of us know what we're doing with this. Okay, everyone, listen up. Our new friend. Everyone, take a oh, deep breath, whoops. try to relax, and we'll get started momentarily. Listen to what he says and repeat his affirmations. <laughs> we are stronger and better together. Because Mr. Stroud is requiring us to listen to your friend, and I have every intention of doing just that, because I like my job and I don't want to get fired. Okay. I'm confident we will succeed. I am confident we will succeed. I 
I trust my teammates and they can trust me. <laughs> this is such a waste of time. I believe in myself and ability to do well my job well. I believe in myself and my ability to do my job well. We're going to finish this project and move on to bigger and better things. We're going to finish this project and move on to bigger and better things. Okay, I think that's enough of that. Thank you for leading us. I hope that was somewhat relaxing, at least. Yeah, it was, kinda. It was fine. I'm good to go over here. You know what? I'll do whatever anyone wants, so long as I never have to go through something like that again. <laughs> okay, everyone. I think that's it. Let's get back to work. Okay, speak with Jules. Well, we're making progress now, I guess. Now that we've unblocked ourselves, tell me about the ship we're making. Based on the decisions you made, well, I'm not quite sure what kind of ship we're going to end up with, but it should be capable in a variety of situations. It sure will have a lot of... stuff to it. Can you go into more detail about the ship we're making? This ship's going to be big, and it's going to have the best components available. I'm sure it'll be very capable of handling any situation thrown at it. This thing is going to be a beast, and I don't know how we're going to make it look halfway presentable. My only other concern comes down to the sticker price, and how we're going to actually sell such a monstrosity. But that's <laughs> marketing's problem now. Poor Nev. Do you think this team will run into this issue again? I hope not, but it's possible. If the ship sells well enough, the board will have no problem increasing the budget next time. The data you gathered for us will last a while too. And I think I picked up some useful techniques from you to help us work together. Just annoy everyone? Let me know if there's anything I, else I can do to help. Now that we've addressed all our issues, we can move forward, finalize the design, and get this into production pretty quickly. If you could do us a favor and let Walter know that we're back on track, I'm sure he'll be thrilled. Thanks for your help. Okay, speak to Walter. My whole life for this. Walter's sleeping. Let's wake him I'm up. I'm expecting Artifacts. big things from you that with this ship crazy, project. Does it? Don't let me down. I managed to get your new ship project back on track. Good to hear. I figured as much. See, I just finished looking over the final design they sent over before you arrived. That was quick. I've got to say, <laughs> it's certainly interesting. They managed to cram just about everything they could into it. Honestly. I don't think it ever occurred to me to do something like that. I'll be honest with you. This is the most expensive ship we've ever made. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm confident we can set up You have money, who cares? <laughs> work. Now I'd be happy to make it my new personal ship. Additionally, <gasps> I want you to have one of the nice the assembly line for all of your hard work. Feel free to pick it up at the star yard. Thanks again. That made it worth it. <laughs> so I'm going to end the video here. This was a mess of video. I went to do the wrong mission. I put the my weapons in the back of the ship, which made it disappear. And then... I got attacked by those ecliptids over and over again, and I died over and over again. And yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of fun editing this video. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.